Hey, thanks for dropping in and happy weekend. I'm having some downtime this Saturday and Sunday and I thought I'd dig out my camera and do some photography. Still photography, that is. That still photography and not using my phone, which probably most of you use to take a photo and not using my trusted digital camera. Mm. So I'm going back to The year is 1955 and mobile phones hadn't been invented back then. There wasn't the technology. Neither were there digital cameras. It was the year that Perez Prado was topping the music charts with cherry pink and apple blossom white. Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister of England, resigned and stepped down. Bed technology was looking futuristic if you pressed all the right buttons. It was also the year that Christian Dior was turning heads with his renamed spring-summer 1955 fashion collection called the A-Line. From a variety of nations gathered under one roof to a place where sensible people, irrespective of their nationality, spend approximately one third of their lives in supine bliss. The ingenuity of bed designers is our subject and this particular example underlines the fact that we are living in a highly mechanized age. A tape recorder for the career girl to dictate into or for the non-career girl a means of playing hours of soothing music. Vibro massage machine which knows a wrinkle or two, so to speak, and irons them out smoothly. The control panel is a real layabout's dream. It turns out the light and a quick flick of the wrist ensures that the curtains are properly closed. The designers of this 2,500 pound bed haven't missed a trick. A late night or early morning cup of tea is right beside you. Other refinements, all controlled from the bed, are the mattress heating units, an intercom telephone to all rooms, an outside line, and of course a portable television set at the foot of the bed. And if you just can't sleep, you can have a whale of a time pressing buttons all night. On April the 4th, an epoch in British history ended with the resignation of Sir Winston Churchill as Prime Minister. With the characteristic cigar clutched in his hand, the evergreen man of 80 years and four months sets out to tender his resignation to the young queen. The man who in 1940 had said that he had nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears and sweat. The night before, he had been host to the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh at number 10 Downing Street. And Konica launched their iconic Pearl 3 camera and I'm lucky to have one here. So this is analog photography before digital was invented. And there's the lens. It's a real beauty created by Konica back in 1955, this camera came out. It's a beauty of a camera a real masterpiece of technology and one of the smallest compact 120 cameras that you can find and that were around. The cameras of kings, queens, prime ministers, those that were into photography had one of these, the Konica Pearl 3. 
And to close it, you have to basically pull this back, this latch back, and that folds like so, just enough to fit into a pocket or into a lady's handbag. Fantastic technology that still lasts today. And no digital, purely analog. This one I've loaded with Ilford black and white uh, film. So I'm gonna go out and take some photos and show you later. But in terms of technology, this was cutting edge. There were no, there's no batteries in this. It's all uh, manual and analog. And you load the film through the back. There's a latch that you pull and it opens up and you wind in the film. This takes 120 film, not the smaller 35 millimeter that many of us are familiar with. And um, it takes really great photos, but it's all manual. So you have to understand the ISO, the f-stops and also the aperture. And once you've mastered those three things, it's very easy to work this camera. So I'm going to go out, I'm going to take some photos, and then I'm going to share with you some great black and white stills that hopefully I'm going to take.